How are you doing everybody? Jonathan here and in this video I'm going to address a topic that has really just started to get underneath my skin because this whole CrossFit thing causes such a big stir and I really don't understand why. All right? You go into any video on YouTube where you see somebody doing let's say a burpee. All right? If it's not done the CrossFit way you'll see all the CrossFitters descend, descend upon this um, this video of the burpee, you know, um, saying that oh it's done completely wrong, blah 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 blah. CrossFit is the only way. Um, if you see a CrossFitter doing a kipping pull-up, that's what seems to really get the uh, the people going. You'll see all the um, traditional gym goers saying this is useless, this is not um, this is not real exercise, and everybody's got a joke about CrossFit as soon as they see the kipping pull-ups. So you have these two schools of thought, all right. And I am somebody that was a personal trainer for years and years. Um, didn't really, wasn't really a fan of CrossFit, wasn't a fan of the idea of CrossFit, because I didn't understand it. Was introduced to it, started to like it, and I do CrossFit a lot, all right? Um, I also, now my business is running boot camps, okay? So um, I can look at it objectively. I can see, you know, the benefits and, you know, the problems with CrossFit, um, and I can, I'm using this video to try to bridge the gap so anybody that's got questions about CrossFit or doesn't really understand or, or just wants a pros and cons list, this is what I'll give you, okay? So the main problem with, uh, with CrossFit is that um, it was intended to be one thing, but in its application, you see a lot of, uh, of shortcuts being taken because it's also a big money maker. So I'm gonna address what's good about CrossFit um, and where people misuse CrossFit and how it leads to CrossFit getting a bad reputation, what you can do to, um, to make the most out of your CrossFit experience if it's a route that you decide to take, okay? So what is CrossFit? CrossFit defines itself as constantly varied functional movements done at a high intensity, all right? Essentially, you're doing um, different things all the time uh, at a high pace, okay? Now, that's how CrossFit defines itself. Now, when somebody asks me what CrossFit is, you have to understand, I run boot camps and I've been running boot camps exclusively for the last three years. So I explain CrossFit as boot camp with a large, uh, with a steep learning curve. Okay, what you have to understand is that every new form of exercise borrows from the exercise that preceded it. All right now, so what is boot camp? Boot camp is really just a, a bunch of exercises that are taken, um, you know, from the gym that are done in a group setting. Boot camp to me is uh, personal training with more than one person. That's really all it is. All right, done in a, uh, a structure of circuit training. All right, I have a video breaking down exactly how. Uh, you can run a typical style boot camp. Um, I'll put a, a link in the description box below so you can watch it. All right, so um, essentially, uh, CrossFit I see is high level um, boot camp. So there's a, a number of things that, that's done by time. Typically, a lot of the workouts are timed in CrossFit. Okay, um, so I can go over some terms. Um, boxes are what CrossFit calls their gyms. CrossFit kind of has its own language. So, um, so every gym that is a CrossFit gym is referred to as a box, all right? Every workout is referred to as a WOD, a workout of the day, all right? And um, when, the, when you do a workout that is, uh, when you do the workout exactly as, as it's explained with respect to reps, weight, and mode, then you get an RX. It's kind of like their gold star saying, you did it the way that we wanted you to. All right, I think that the RX designation is what creates a little bit of danger, but I'll get that to I'll get that I'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so you know the, what RX is, wads are, and uh, and boxes are. Just in case I throw out those words. Now, um, what is great about CrossFit? There are some great things about CrossFit because number one, I've always been a big fan of uh, large group training. That's how I earn a living. I run exclusively large group trainings. I train like fifteen to twenty people at a time. Um, in my boot camp, and I've been doing it for the last three years, and I enjoy it, all right? CrossFit essentially does the same thing, all right? They train a large group of people, all right, with varying levels of conditioning, and, um, you know, it's done by time, so it helps to create a great community. Um, it helps to create uh, a support system within the group, all right? Um, but there are two things that, uh, that happen when you have a community. Number one is that it creates kind of a group think mentality when you get so convinced or so enamored with your um, mode of exercise or with your with your new religion, because CrossFit in a lot of ways can be viewed as a religion, you tend to have a, 
a skewed view of the rest of the fitness world. And that's what happens. You know, you see a burpee that isn't done the CrossFit way, you know, maybe they do it with a push-up instead of like peeling themselves off the floor, then all of a sudden, oh, that's wrong, that's not CrossFit. Or if their chest and hips don't make contact with the floor, they, if they essentially go to a plank, that's not CrossFit. And you start to attack things that aren't necessarily unsafe, they're just not done the way that you want them to do, uh, to, to be done. All right? Um, the second problem with creating a community is that it's inevitable when you get a large group of people that you create a class system, okay? And um, this has not been a concern I don't think it was so much a concern in CrossFit's infancy because of, who, because of who it tended to draw. But now since it's drawing the lay person, I think the class system is what's creating the stigma of danger with, uh, with CrossFit. And let me explain. CrossFit's poster children have these incredible bodies, all right? Rich Froning, Annie Thor's daughter, um, Camille bont uh Dan Bailey. These are all like the, the poster children for, for CrossFit. Um, Jason Kalipa. And you know they're they're ripped, they're strong, um, they're pretty. You know every you know everything's you know apple pie with them. So, um, but you have to understand that CrossFit initially just drew a certain kind of crowd. These are all ex high level athletes. So Rich Froning was like a, a baseball player that earned you know college scholarships. He turned them down, um, but he still earned them playing baseball. Um, Camille LeBlanc was a high level gymnast um, who suffered an injury. That's the only reason why she stopped. And then she ended up playing soccer, rugby, anything under the sun. Um, Annie Thor's daughter um, was like a gymnast for eight years. Then she was like a, a dancer for two years. Then she was a pole vaulter for two years. And, uh, and Dan Bailey was a Division One track and field 200-400 uh, meter runner. Uh, a pretty good one. So what happened was these folks you know, competed at a very high level. They stopped competing in their sport because there's no professional, you know, um, there's no, there's nothing offered professionally for their sport, and you know they were just looking for something. They were gym rats before, and then they discovered CrossFit, and they said, "Hey, this, this is competitive, and I can be athletic, and I, I think I'd like to do that." Okay, and for the most part, that's what, that's what CrossFit draws. You don't need to work very hard to get an ex-athlete into CrossFit. Like I, I played Division One football, all right, and after that, I was just looking for something. If you look at a lot of people's stories, it's I did this for a long period of time, and I was looking for something, and then I discovered CrossFit, okay? So it's drawn a lot of people, all right? Now, because of its popularity and some great marketing, um, it's also appealing now to the lay person, and boxes are hopping up, uh, popping up all over the place. And the lay person walks in, they see these beautiful bodies, and they assume that you probably were very average before you started, but since you started doing CrossFit, CrossFit gave you this body. Now, this is not to say that CrossFit can't give you an amazing body because it can, all right? Um, I think that the way it's intended to work, if you apply a lot of its intended um, methods, you can get in great shape. Um, it's going to take some work because a lot of it is also, um, you know, flexibility, excuse me, regaining your skill work uh, to do a lot of these gymnastics type movements, but they're great, all right? They just take a long time to learn. It comes easily to somebody that has competed in a high intensity sport or a high impact sport, not so easy to the layperson. So what happens? You see these ex-athletes, all right, these, you know, kings of the community, walk kings and queens of the community, excuse me, and they're doing these exercises very well. You know, they go through their on-ramp classes, that's the other term I left out. On-ramp classes are, um, you know, usually three classes that you're required to do before you start working out at your box, all right? They're kind of like your intro classes, which is a good thing. You should have intro classes. And they pick up these exercises um, fairly quickly in a lot of cases, and then they jump in to do wads, and then they can do wads RX style, perhaps maybe not with the weight that's um, required, but they don't have to change the mode, because in terms of coordination, explosion, flexibility, they've already got that down based on their training as a child. The lay person, however, has never had that. So what happens is they, you know, they complete their on-ramp classes, perhaps somewhat awkwardly, and they feel that they should be able to jump right in and do the exercises the same way that the ex-athletes are doing them. So what happens? Um, the human factor comes in. All right. So this is this is the problem with uh, CrossFit being a, a, a steep learning curve um, type of you know exercise environment. This even happens in boot camp. When you put a timer on something, and the timer is great because it motivates people, but when you put a timer on something, it automatically becomes a race, 
and not a test. All right, the timer is meant to be a test, um, not necessarily a race, unless you're in competition. And people sometimes view every wide as a competition. But it's an opportunity for you to get better. The layperson doesn't understand this. So they will sacrifice form. They will sacrifice um, better judgment in order to get the RX. Because, hey, I got the RX. I got the gold sticker. All right? Um, and people are fighting for the RX even though they're not ready. So what happens is that's where you see a lot of the bad form. And the danger that people attach to CrossFit comes in because of the human factor. And it also comes in because of the lack of training for the coaches. Now, just so you know, you know, I got the shirt, you know, I got the, uh, I got the, I got the shirt. I didn't even open it. You know, I'm CrossFit level one trainer. This is not a certification. This is a certificate. All right. There's a big difference. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll go into the problem with the certificate versus certification a little bit, but what's happening is these boxes are popping up all over the place. The people that are running them don't necessarily have the training to communicates to the client because it's also a psychological battle as much as it is no don't do it they don't know how to communicate with the person it's really just a money maker for them and they're allowing people that aren't ready for certain exercises to engage in them um, and they're the the lay person is completing the exercise but they are doing it wrong and then they create all these muscular imbalances um, they develop all these overuse injuries and then all of a sudden CrossFit has a stigma of being dangerous Moreover, the, uh, the trainers that are involved with these workouts are programming randomly, okay? Um, now, CrossFit is meant to be varied. It's not meant to be random. There's a huge difference. Random says, let's do uh, handstand push-ups. Um, I'm trying to think of something that, that you know, just doesn't make sense. Let's do front squats followed by back squats, followed by cleans, followed by deadlifts followed by pistol squats. That's the lot for the day. All right, that's, that's random. You just chose random. Varied says, um, let's do front squats, um, chest to bar pull-ups, uh, you know, ring dips, and burpees. All right, that's, that's varied, okay? The first one was random. It's, and since you're choosing random, you chose a bunch of uh, quad and hip dominant exercises and you opened yourself up to an overuse injury because once you get to the end, you're going to be buckled out. You're going to be, you know, sacrificing all kinds of form. There's no rest for a specific body part within that wad to keep you safe. You're essentially just beating yourself down. All right. So a lot of it has to do with the fact that the the the, the person in charge isn't programming well. But even if they were programming well, if they don't have the experience of communicating with clients the importance of uh, gradually progressing. You know, the client is then going to say, you know, um, I didn't really learn the clean, but that's what the wad is for the day, so I'm going to do it, all right? And nobody stops them, okay? Now, what happens is you, you see the bad form in the boxes and in the local competitions, but you don't see that bad form in the, um, in the grand competitions, such as the regionals and the, um, and the CrossFit Games themselves. Why is this the case? Because every athlete has a judge that will no-rep them. Um, essentially counting their repetition is no good if they don't meet certain standards. Whereas in a CrossFit gym, your, um, your, your trainer to you know, client ratio can be 1 to 10, 1 to 20. Um, I think in a situation where you have a large uh, or a steep learning curve, having that kind of ratio just invites the layperson to cheat. All right? And when you cheat with heavy weights that you can't... Uh, that you don't know how to abandon correctly, then um, then you put yourself in more of a uh, a situation where you're bound to get hurt. Now, um, CrossFit has done a lot of good things, all right, to help the the average gym person understand, you know, how to use their body. Because uh, let, let's talk about the uh, the kipping pull-ups, which usually causes a lot of a stir. All right, now. Um, I saw a commercial uh, on the high jump, the uh, the the exercise, the high jump, and in the beginning, or for a very long time, people used to run up to the uh, to the high bar and jump over it um, with their chest over the bar. All right. It wasn't until one man ran up to the bar and um, glided over back over the bar. All right. So chest up to the to the sky. All right. Because the point was not to get your body over the bar with your um, you know while facing the bar. The point was to get your body over the bar. Period. All right. And you want to try to find the most efficient way to do that. So when you look at the kipping pull-up, 
The point is for you to get your chin over the bar um, efficiently and in a predetermined amount of time. So most people don't understand, like I do kicking pull-ups in my gym and you can see that there are a couple of people that just look at me like, mm, what a shame, he doesn't even know how to do a pull-up correctly. And um, the truth is I could probably smoke them pretty easily on a strict pull-up. Alright, so CrossFit, what, what people make fun of, what people say CrossFitters should be doing, they do, but they do that in training. They don't do that in competition because competition is about speed and efficiency. So CrossFitters do a lot of strict pull-ups because they want to work on the muscles that are important for one aspect of that pull in competition. But if you focus solely on you know, the muscles uh, for a strict pull-up, you would die out very quickly, which is why you engage your core. Listen, side note, big problem in the gym, in the typical gym, nobody pays attention to their core. You have to be strong in the midsection, all right, in order to uh, accomplish a lot of these exercises. If you put an average you know, pull-up machine in the gym, under the bar, um, they will die out because their core is weak. And you can't do certain exercises such as the front squat and the overhead squat if you have a poor um, if you have poor strength in the core. And that's what happens a lot in the gym. They're so focused on the bench press, on the seated um, overhead press, on the on the uh, you know abduction and adduction machine. The core is lazy. The core is weak. All right, and you can't do certain exercises unless you have a tight core. So CrossFit has been very uh, beneficial to the fitness industry because you can't do these exercises unless you focus on something that's so important anyway. Moreover, um, these, uh, these, these functional exercises that CrossFit does, such as the thruster um, and the push press, it forces you to work on your legs. All right? Average gym science, bro science, all right? it's Monday through Friday, work on everything from the waist up. And then, um, you know, on your last day of the week, you, you give to legs, all right? And you develop these uh, unnatural, unbalanced bodies that can bench 315 pounds, but can only really squat correctly 200 pounds, if that, all right? So I think it's helping, actually, the fitness industry to balance itself out. It's helping people that once focused just on, you know, upper body strength, the Arnold Schwarzenegger era, you know, and, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was pretty balanced, but, you know, all they cared about was his chest. Um, you cannot, however, perform if your body's imbalanced. You can pose, but CrossFit is about performance. Okay, I, I kind of went on a side, so I may uh, I may randomize a little bit. Another way that CrossFit has helped the uh, the fitness industry is it has brought some credence to the um, the depth of the squat and the elimination of like open chain um, leg leg exercises as your only means of uh, of getting in shape. So like leg extension, leg curls. I don't even waste my time with them anymore. It's about the squat and it debunks the, um, the, the notion that a deep squat where your, hip where your hip crease goes below the knees is unsafe. If you want an example of what a squat should look like, um, Google baby squat, all right? And you'll see that that's how our bodies are made to move. The reason why it doesn't happen that way into our adulthood is because we have no flexibility. So how many people go to the gym and don't stretch? you will see 90%, 95% of them don't stretch. They go to the gym, they do, their, they do their strength, they do their cardio, and then they leave, okay? And the flexibility is very important uh, for CrossFit for you to do these high-level, steep learning curve movements, all right? So it's bringing back the importance of flexibility because I was doing front squats, you know, a couple guys were you know, asking me, you know, can, can I try it, can you watch me? I said, okay. Um, they couldn't get their, you know, their elbows under the bar, they couldn't get their hips, you know, past parallel or even two parallel, and then they started to see the weaknesses that existed in their bodies. So it's helping in a lot of ways, all right, with respect to, um, to some squats and some bodyweight exercises. The main problem that um, the CrossFit runs into, I believe, uh, with respect to danger, comes with the Olympic lifts, okay? Now, the first thing that you have to understand is that in these on-ramp classes, these three required classes that you're supposed to do, and they're usually an hour each, they go over nine fundamental movements, all right? You can only go over so many, but it goes over the air squat, the front squat, the overhead squat, the push press, the strict press, um, the uh, push jerk, the med ball clean, the sumo deadlift high pull, and, um, and the deadlift, okay? goes over all these exercises, and then you're done, and then you can participate in the regular class, all right? Now, 
a responsible um, box owner, or gym owner, will understand that you've only had so much experience with such exercises. And if there are Olympic lifts, the Olympic lifts being the uh, clean and the snatch, Google them if you don't know what they are, um, you're not going to be doing them. Or if we're going to do an exercise that requires a lot of core strength that you don't have because you're just coming off the street, you're not going to be doing your overhead squats with any kind of a bar. You're going to be doing it with a PVC pipe like this, all right? I box hop a lot, box hopping, just going to other boxes just to see what they do. I almost never see anybody work with a PVC pipe unless it's a warm up, all right? And um, you have to understand that there's no rush with CrossFit. And I think this class system, in order to get the RX, um, the people feel the need to rush themselves into a workout um, even if, you know, and let, let's just assume that the, um, the the coach or the trainer is responsible. You know, luckily I'm, I'm at a great gym. Shameless plug, CrossFit Steam, East Rutherford. Um, and, um, you know, they'll stop you if you're not ready for, uh, for an exercise. Um, but, you know, if they, even if the person is responsible, the coach is responsible, that client will still force the issue of doing this exercise in order to compete with the class. So it's very important that the, um, the main coach in charge, you know, uh, instills in this person, listen, you're going to take some time, all right? And you have to get to them. You have to make them understand. It's not just about telling them, and if they ignore you, it's their fault. You have to make them understand that this exercise isn't right for them, all right? Um, so the, the issue comes when, you know, you're doing your cleans, you're doing your snatches, and the person doesn't want to modify. The human factor says, if I modify my workout, not, not only do I miss out on my RX, you know, my thing that makes me feel like I belong, um, I just feel bad about myself. But if you listen to the nine fundamental exercises that I uh, recommended or that, that I explained, there's no clean except for the med ball clean and there's no snatch. All right. There's an overhead squat, which is the catch position for your snatch on heavy, um, but there's no like power snatch all right, or, or hang snatch or anything like that. So um, if there was something that I would like to see, uh, it's, it's more, um, it's, it's coaches being more willing to replace a snatch with a med ball, all right? If, if, uh, if somebody's coming off the on-ramp, um, you should be doing med ball cleans, all right? And that will only help you because when you get to your squat clean, you'll have more use of the motion. And to abandon a, uh, a poorly done med ball clean is not very hard. The ball is soft. All you got to do is let it go. To try to abandon a bar, even a light one that's 15 pounds, you're still you can still put yourself in a fair amount of danger. You know, if you if you were close to catching it, or if you have it, you know, in the front rack position or almost in the front rack position. So really, nobody should be cleaning a bar until they can do the equivalent weight of the bar on a med ball clean efficiently for you know extended repetitions. All right, and when it comes to snatches. I honestly feel that CrossFit should teach, um, should either add the, um, the dumbbell snatch as one of the fundamental movements so that once somebody gets into the, uh, the workout, once they get into the wads and they see snatches, they can do dumbbell snatches because, you know, if you're, if you, <laughs> if you're watching somebody uh, that doesn't know how to do a, a snatch correctly, their snatch looks exactly like this. It's a front raise with a jump. So they're either in their, um, their hang position or they're in their power position, and instead of their snatch, you know, pulling up and then getting under the bar, their snatch looks like this. All right. Um, so gotta work on my shoulder flexibility. I know. So, um, so you want to give them something that they can do because may, uh, negotiating a bar is much harder than negotiating a dumbbell. All right. And even though they may not be able to, um, you know, to negotiate the uh, the dumbbell snatch that well, at least they're safer. All right, to abandon the dumbbell snatch is much easier than abandoning a, uh, a, a bar, a bar snatch. It, it takes a very long time to learn the snatch. It's, it's one of the most complicated exercises um, that you can do. And these people are you know, walking in and they're not having it explained to them that they need time. All right, I'm ranting. I'm sorry. So, um, so yes, uh, CrossFit is great for the fitness industry because it brings back you know, the, the fundamentals that are required to do 
these uh, these Olympic lifts, which are you know squatting below parallel, which is gaining flexibility, which is having the core strength to maintain a front rack position in your um, in your front squat, which is developing the um, the flexibility and the mobility in your shoulders to maintain an overhead squat, the mobility in the ankles, the mobility in the hips to get down low. All of this is being brought back thanks to CrossFit and its implementation of these exercises. However. Their, um, their reluctance to pull a layperson off of a Olympic lift is opening themselves up to danger, okay? Now, the next thing that's opening CrossFit up to danger is the competitions, okay? So, not, not the regionals, not the, not the CrossFit games, not the open workouts, not the CrossFit open. Those, I believe, are very, very well um, put together. Dave Kratt, Castro, like you killed me with your workouts, but I have to admit that I look at these workouts and from a trainer's perspective, I, I a lot of times go like, well done. Yeah, that's, that's a nice one. You know, especially with respect to the open. All right, um, but what's happening is when you get your certificate, all right, to, in order for you to open up a CrossFit box, uh, and this is the problem, because CrossFit is really hot and it's a great money maker. What you have to do is you have to go to a, uh, a level one, um, let's call it a seminar, um, you learn a lot about CrossFit, you take an exam, and then if you pass the exam, you get a certificate. This is not a certification, this does not say that you are um, competent enough to take a layperson you know, that's never done a lift before and implement a CrossFit workout. It says that you sat through what we told you and you understand what CrossFit is supposed to be. You need this in order to open up a, uh, a CrossFit box, okay? What happens is somebody that doesn't have any experience but just wants to make money off of CrossFit says, all right, I'll do this two-day cert, I'll open up a box because I have the money, and then I'll find anybody that I can to run these classes. All right, or I'll, you know, or I'll take my trainer that has really no experience with Olympic lifts or gymnastics, and then I'll have them take this course, and then they can, uh, and then they can run my box and I'll make a ton of money. All right? One way to make money is to have a box and to get a lot of members. You get through membership. All right. Another way to make money is to run competitions. So you get these little regional competitions here and there, where a bunch of a uh, bunch of people come together. You put together these you know crazy workouts that seem really hard and challenging, and you get people to pay eighty-five to hundred dollars to participate in your competition before they even know what the workout is. And this is usually the case. It says we're going to have a competition. Um, we need people to sign up, and you know as we approach the competition, we'll start to let you know what the workout is for the day. And, uh, and what happens is, you know, you, your money's already laid down, and then all of a sudden you have a, you have this exercise that you're really inefficient at, but it's a competition, it's non-refundable, so you go to the competition, and then you don't want to look bad, again, in the class system, so you go through the exercise, and you do it wrong, and then you hurt yourself, and then everybody sees. All right, now, this is not, I'm going to stay away from the Kevin Norman story. Um, but what's happening is, these, uh, the programming you know, is not being done responsibly because these coaches and these trainers don't have the experience, you know, with training. They essentially just, they choose things randomly, all right? And there's really no way that CrossFit um, can legitimize you right now. I think they're working toward that because they're seeing that boxes are popping up, which is great. The word is getting out, but um, a lot of people are just putting together crappy workouts, you know? And although they make workouts available at CrossFit.com, um, the human factor of the of the owner, hey, I'm the owner, hey, I'm the coach, I got this cert, you know, or I got this certificate. Once you get the certificate, you feel like you can do whatever you want. I'm going to just do what I want to do because I, I really want to smoke them. You know, people often think that you have to leave your CrossFit workout like that, all right, and that's not the case. Um, you, you just want to leave having worked hard, all right, but... You know, in the videos that you know that look super cool, you see you see the the high level athlete gassed out and it's really inspiring, and you think you need to do that. You need to look like that in order to see results. And the owner thinks they need to make you look like that to make you stay. So a lot of it comes with poor marketing and um, poor exposure, rather, because it doesn't always come from CrossFit. It just comes from you know people recording the workouts, which is pretty commonplace in, in CrossFit. Um, the last thing that I forgot to mention is that the uh, the Olympic lifts are like the bench press of the gym, okay? It's like the sexy exercise, all right? And people are too concerned with the PR, their personal record. Um, and so people are spending a lot of time, you know, uh, just trying to PR without getting good at the exercise. So they're consistently practicing poor form just for the sake of 
getting the weight overhead. So here, here's the problem. You have the pull-ups, okay? The only point of the pull-up is for you to get your chin over the bar. And there's a specific way to do that with a kip or with a butterfly. And, um, and people say, okay, well, it looks kind of random. Um, and then when you have the Olympic lift, your point for the snatch is to get the bar from the floor to overhead. All right, and they don't take into consideration the many, many steps and the coordination that's required in order to do that efficiently. So they take the same concept that's, that's, um, you know, that's applied to the pull-up and they apply it to the, uh, the, the, the Olympic lift and then they just try to yank weight. It's, it's, very, it's very complicated. It's hard to explain even as I try to explain it. But um, you have to understand that uh, the Olympic lift has to be viewed completely separately from everything else because I think that's where people are seeing the biggest instance of injury. You never see somebody saying, oh, I got, I got hurt on the double under. Or, you know, you, you may do a box jump and then, you know, scrape your shin. That just happens. That can happen in a boot camp, okay? That can happen in the gym. So that's not CrossFit's fault. Well, it's just a box, you know? Wear, wear thick socks. Um, it usually happens with the Olympic lift. So, um, it, it's all based on the trainer um, or what might think it is. My, my, my thing to you is how do you find a good CrossFit box, all right? Because there are trainers that may just have the level one cert, um, level one certificate rather, um, uh, that are um, that are great coaches that can be really relied on, that can be trusted. There are others that um, that that don't that you know that do have the cert that, that can't be trusted. And personal trainers don't get too high on your horse because there are personal trainers with you know an NSCA cert or with an A cert that just do, that just do whatever they want. They just take tests well. They do whatever they want, and they can hurt their clients as well. It's just that you know they they're not as um, salient and visible as CrossFit is. So this doesn't say that training is, is safer than CrossFit. It's just that CrossFit has more exposure now, so it's under the eye. So how do you find? How do you know that your CrossFit box is where you want to be? Okay, um, you really don't. You don't know. But I'm going to give you some things that you want to do in order to keep yourself safe because you never want to put yourself completely in the hands of some other person because nobody's perfect. All right, even the most watchful and, 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 and meticulous trainer can make a mistake at times. So, how can you identify a good CrossFit um, if that's not, if that's a route that you want to take? Now that you understand what CrossFit is, number one, um, consider their perspective on fitness. All right, if it's so, CrossFit is the only thing in the world. CrossFit is the best thing that ever happened. You know, before CrossFit, there was nothing. There was darkness. And then CrossFit came, and then light, you know, here. If it has that kind of, uh, that kind of vibe at their box, then, you know, maybe that isn't the CrossFit for you, okay? The second thing that you want to consider, um, you have to, if you really care that much about doing well, invest extra time. Now, the great thing that some people, that some boxers are doing is that they're hiring Olympic lifting competitors, like people that competed in the Olympics uh, and weightlifting, the snatches and the cleans, and they're doing specific bar classes. Take those classes, all right? When it comes to things that, that I'm not good at, if I want to get good at a muscle up, um, for the most part, I don't go to CrossFitters, I go to gymnasts, all right? If I want to get good at the Olympic lift, something that CrossFit promotes, I don't go to CrossFitters, I go to Olympic lifters, all right? So take some time to, if you care that much, take some time to invest in yourself. Do a, a USAW certification, all right? Cost $450. You're paying a couple hundred dollars a month anyway to do CrossFit. What's an extra 450 to make sure that you're doing it correctly and having a leg up on your competition when you decide to compete? All right, um, and uh, the last thing that you might want, you might want a, uh, an application that will help you determine your rep max. You want a rep max calculator. And why is that important? Because on any given day, you should be writing down your workouts, okay? So let's say you did, um, I don't know, 21.59 of, what's that one, uh, of, of deadlifts and, and handstand push-ups, okay? So the, the recommendation uh, for the weight, let's say it was 225. You have to do 21 reps, 225, and 21 handstand push-ups, 15 reps, 225, 15 handstand push-ups, 9 reps, 225, 9 reps of handstand push-ups. If you can't do um, 21 reps of 225, you know, ideally you should be doing things unbroken. That means not resting in between your weights, all right, in between your set. So if you can't do 21 straight, 
find a weight that you can do 21 straight of, all right? And then mark it down, okay? Now, the next time you, um, next time you see deadlifts, all right, you can put 21 as your reps times the weight, all right? And it will give you your rep max for that weight. So if you saw now a workout with, you know, 10 deadlifts, four rounds of 10 deadlifts with stuff in between, whatever the rep max is, um, you can create that, all right? So you're gonna put in 10 reps now and you're gonna find that weight that you need to use in order for you to maintain the same one rep max that you had with your 21-15-9. I hope this is not too complicated. All right, but that way you'll know how much weight you need to use, all right? Forget the RX. There's a certain standard of strength that you need to attain, and if you're a late person, you may not have it, so don't worry about you know, the RX. That, that's the main thing. If you can get that out of your head, you're, the half, you know, half the work is done, all right? And then um, remember that the, uh, the Olympic lifts, they're not that important. If you don't have the right training, all right? Don't sacrifice your health or your well-being for the sake of impressing people, all right? Until you get proficient or until you take a bar class multiple times and this, uh, this coach with the right credentials, such as a USAW certification, perhaps NSCA certification, and a, uh, or experience lifting in the, you know, in, in the Olympics, says you're good, stick with med ball cleans and dumbbell snatches in your workouts when you see cleans and snatches. All right, to be much better off. I ranted for so long. I hope that you guys like this video. Um, I just want you guys to be safe. Listen, CrossFit isn't bad. You just, um, you know, misguided uh, efforts make it dangerous. All right, so just do your due diligence. Pay attention to your body. Get the extra education that you need, and you'll be fine. I hope you found this video helpful. This is uh, uh, this generally goes out to trainers, but if you're just a lay person that found this, I hope you found this helpful. Um, but I'm going to sign off the same way that I always sign off. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, comment below. Remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe. Stress levels won't get rest, don't slap anybody. Love your clients. They will love you back. I will see you all tomorrow or the next day. And you have a good one.